I'd like to thank the members of the Labor Party, the amazing Frankston campaign team, the Frankston branch of the Labor Party and the Frankston community for bestowing me the honour of representing them in Parliament. Thank you also to Lee Talamas, Simon Finn, Matt Hilakari, Chris Brain and Josh Sinclair for your tutoring and patience. And I'd especially like to thank my wife Kirsten and my children Charlie, Hunter and Jack no. <laughs> for their patience, love and inspiration and also their comedic relief. Uh, Jack, who's six this morning, was told he had to dress up to go to Parliament and he ran down the hall and said, what do I dress up as? So we almost had Spiderman here <laughs> this morning. <laughs> okay, on with business. I'm, <laughs> I'm honoured to stand here as the member for Frankston, a beautiful city with a proud working history, a place where Labor members have used their position for the good of the community, a place where movies are filmed and holidays memories are created. Frankston is rightly known as Victoria's friendliest beach and Victoria's most sustainable city. I see the story of me being here today and speaking in your presence as the epitome of a typical Labor story. I was brought up in the town of Churchill in Gippsland, a town of resilient, hard-working people, not unlike Frankston and many other communities in Victoria. Dad was an immigrant and a Vietnam veteran and a taskmaster who worked in the Moore coal mine and mum gave up her career as a nurse to be a stay-at-home mum. Dad, now a Corps Sergeant Major in the Salvation Army, and mum, also heavily involved with the Salvos, sacrificed many, many things to see that my sister and I were well-educated and had every opportunity that they could afford. But if I had to think of one defining moment in my upbringing, I think it would be the privatisation of the Latrobe Valley power industry in the Kennett years. My community literally died overnight. People moved on, families broke down, and unfortunately, it was all too much for some people. As a teenager, I saw the immense pressure on my family, and looking back, that's what defined my career choices. I think we can all agree that there's no higher calling than serving your community. So I completed a teaching and arts degree, majoring in history politics, and began a career as a teacher in primary, secondary, and special developmental schools. One of the most inspirational achievements I witnessed while working in the education system was the introduction of the Victorian Certificate of Applied Learning, yeah. spearheaded by Labor's own Lynn Kosky, who, of course, will be sorely missed. VCAL provides an alternative to the VCE for students who wish to go into employment or vocational training after school rather than university. The program caters for disengaged students deemed to be at risk of dropping out. I witnessed the tremendous results of this program firsthand and I am critical of the previous government's removal of funds from VCAL which supports some of the state's most disadvantaged students and I'll be advocating strongly in the future to support this program. Yeah. If I can quote Lynn, she recognised that the successful provision of quality education and training for all is the critical requirement of all modern dem democracies to enable their students to flourish personally and to maximise economic, social and cultural opportunity. It is a fundamental community and social glue while being a bridge to a more prosperous and harmonious future. There is no reason to think that today anything has changed since Lynn Kosky spoke those words in 2006. Whilst teaching, I saw that children become the foundations of successful communities when they are given the best start in an education system funded appropriately by state governments. Today, it is up to us to make sure our children have the best opportunities and to be great role models, as tomorrow they will be the future of our state and we need smart, well-informed children to take the reins. Although I love teaching, and I still do, I decided I still had an itch for helping my community that couldn't be satisfied, until I became a firefighter in 2001. Frankston Fire Station was my first appointment, and Kirsten, my wife, and I fell in love with the area for obvious reasons. We moved there soon after. For someone raised hours from the nearest beach, it felt like being in paradise, and it still does. It has always been my job to help people, and I could never imagine being satisfied doing anything else. I'm happy working on the tools, 42 metres up in the air over a fully involved factory fire on ladder trucks, defibrillating dying patients or at a car accident using five tonne jaws of life, always to the benefit of my community and never stopping until the job is done. 
Although, if I never get another cat out of a tree, I would be happy. <laughs> I've now taken to adopting words as my tools for the benefit of my community. A community that has had inadequate representation and a community with many, many jobs left unfinished. The city of Frankston is about to enter an exciting new era under an Andrews Labor government. Yeah. Frankston is the gateway to the peninsula where nine out of 10 of Victoria's most livable suburbs are located. Sadly though, the Frankston community feels like it hasn't been listened to and I don't blame it. We have significant hurdles to cross if we are to reach our full potential as a community. In retrospect, the 2014 Labor campaign for the seat of Frankston was the biggest advocacy campaign for Frankston ever. Through countless conversations, the Frankston community relayed to me what it thought we needed to accomplish, and I began working on their behalf to achieve these goals months ago as a candidate. And Frankston has never needed a Labor government more than now. Alistair Harkness, our former Labor member for Frankston, had a vision for Frankston. And I'm pleased to see that with Labor government funding, Frankston has just opened the Peninsula Aquatic and Recreation Centre that Alistair fought for. My vision for Frankston extends on his vision and will involve hard but satisfying work. We will soon be taking the next step and see the rejuvenation of one of our city's crucial areas, the train station and Young Street Corridor, under Labor's $50 million commitment to see Frankston lead the peninsula into the future. This is the largest commitment to Frankston in many decades and is desperately needed. Any vision for Frankston in the future involves transforming this neglected area first. Some welfare agencies in Frankston believe the youth unemployment percentage in the area is registering in the high teens. Most of these kids are good kids and just need the opportunities that have been taken from them. The increase of funding for TAFEs and the correct funding for our education system are ways of providing our kids a positive and a constructive future. Under an Andrews Labor government, our Chisholm TAFE in Frankston will become the flagship of education in the southeast. We can provide hope and direction to our young people, and it is our responsibility to do so. The drug ice disproportionately affects Frankston, as it does many other communities throughout the state. It has been ignored for years. And I'm proud to be part of a Labor government that is committed to a task force involving medical experts, police, drug rehabilitation centres, the youth work sector and government ministers to find answers to dealing with both policing and treating this horrendous addiction. I look forward to seeing my children grow up in a community with an environmental conscience that regards sustainability as the norm rather than the exception. And we all know the value of the green wedge land that runs through our community and why it is so important that Labor has protected it. I also aim to see my children and today's youth of Frankston become adults supported by a government that knows the satisfaction of having a job, not just for the salary, but for the pride of being a contributing member of our community. And I'm proud to be part of a government that is progressive in its policy making and knows that creating employment opportunities becomes part of the overall solution to some of our social issues. Most of all though, I want to help create a city of Frankston that is the, increasingly the envy of all other coastal cities. At this moment, we have a strong community culture, the best geographical location, and a strong Labor government making generous commitments to our city. Our challenge in the future is to take all these strengths and turn our vision of Frankston into a reality. I am a proud member of the United Firefighters Union, Victorian branch, and a former shop steward at the Frankston Fire Station. During my time as a firefighter, the increase in safety stands for firefighters is directly proportional to how hard union members fought for them. When I started in 2001, for example, we were exposed to asbestos routinely without any training, guidance, or reporting, and wore turnout gear that adhered to no standard at all. All issues that our union had a hand in fixing on my recruit course in 2001, we sent five people to hospital after a 600 Celsius degree explosion. And without the union's involvement, I'm convinced that nothing would have changed and it would happen again. When I witnessed people trying to denigrate the United Firefighters Union recently, I saw people who enjoy conditions union fought hard for, like annual leave, sick leave, overtime, but 
they don't understand that it's not just firefighters' safety that unions fight for. It's the community's safety as well. The people who these unions consist of are people just like me, with families to provide for and to come home safely at the end of the day. And when I previously spoke of inadequate representation, nothing speaks of it more than letting our community down like it has been let down for the last four years. I find it very, very difficult to digest some of the actions of the previous government. Mr Speaker, the harsh reality of govern government ignorance hits me as I remember being in a twisted car wreck with a heavily pregnant mother and her eight-year-old son. With no ambulance on scene for a considerable time, imagine for yourself how hard it is to keep a trapped mother calm. She knows she's lost the baby and she's watching me trying to keep her eight-year-old alive. She doesn't understand why paramedics are taking so long and I can't give her any answer that's going to satisfy her. The people of Victoria deserve better. And when people are dying unnecessarily, you're doing it wrong. With friends in the firefighting industry dying of cancer, it is difficult to process decisions of a government that rejects presumptive legislation four times in spite of overwhelmingly conclusive evidence and then commits to it in light of bad polling. Firefighters and paramedics deserve better, which they can be assured of under a Labor government. I truly believe that we can judge the success of our state by looking at how we treat the most vulnerable in our community. In believing this, I know we have a lot of work to do. The cost of living is crushing families in many Victorian communities and Frankston is feeling that pressure. The commitment to count, cap council rates at CPI is a common sense approach to this issue. Cuts to the education systems causing schools to crumble and a broken health system will take more time to repair. I look forward to being part of a government with integrity that listens to what our community needs, not dictates to them what they can have. A lesson my parents gifted to me, and certainly one that I'll pass on to my three beautiful children, is that the only time we should be looking down on another person is when you are helping them up. And I've been guided by this principle my whole life. I think a Labor government that can look at such basic social fabric issues that affect our most vulnerable and create the plan to fix them is fit to govern Victoria. Personally, I've been humbled to receive Chief Officer's commendations for rescuing people and privileged to work during some of our state's worst disasters with some of the best emergency service crews in the nation. Today, though, those things are somewhat eclipsed by the honour of standing here and representing my community in Parliament. Now, I realise, Mr Speaker, I may not be the most polished speaker in this Parliament, but as Frankston's representative, what I bring with me is my own set of Labor values, varnished by a unique set of life experiences and an intimate knowledge of what is at stake when we don't get it right. What I also bring to this Parliament is a commitment to the notion that right is right, even if everyone is against it, and wrong is wrong, even if everyone is for it. In the next four years, I'll be working tirelessly to put people first and ensure the right thing is done by Frankston and Victoria. The Frankston community and Victoria deserve no less from their representatives. I've been proudly serving the Frankston community for 14 years and am passionate about continuing to serve them in the future as Frankston's Member of Parliament. Frankston has a wonderfully bright future and I will bring respect and integrity back to this position through hard work and honouring the commitments that we have made. We've got a lot of work to do and I don't intend to waste a day. Thank you for indulging me.